ವಸುದೇವಸುತಂದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಅಸತೋ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜೋದ್ರಮಯ ಪ್ರಕ್ಷೋರಮೃತ Let us offer our salutations to Lord Krishna, mm. the embodiment of bliss, who came to establish the wicked and uphold dharma. He gave uplifting, inspiring, immortal message in the form of Bhagavad Gita. the ideas can be practiced by anybody in the universe people who are really seeking spirituality must study bhagavad gita in depth and practice the ideas in their life let us pray to the divine supreme to lead us from the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality so the upanishad says all of our sufferings are because of ignorance lack of understanding so there is very urgent need of developing our intellect to understand the subtle meanings of the ideas expressed in the bhagavad gita verse number 19 we are dealing with jnana yoga the yoga of wisdom ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಕಾಮಸಂಕಲ್ಪವರ್ಜಿತ ಜ್ಞಾನಗ್ನಿದಗ್ಧಕರ್ಮಾಣ ತಮಾಹು ಪಂಡಿತ ಬುಧ ಹಿ ಹೂಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ವಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬರ್ನ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಫೈರ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ವಿ ದಿ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ everybody has to work but the man of wisdom works with devoid of egoism he works with the attitude of serving mankind once they have the attitude of serving it becomes karma yoga it paves the way for your onward journey in spiritual path such a person firmly believes that he is a mere instrument of the divine with that attitude firmly established in his heart he renders selfless service this way swami vekananda has given the most wonderful motto for the ramakrishna mission atma mokshartham jagat dhitaye it was seeking liberation sarva humanity sarva humanity what a wonderful sublime teaching swami vekananda has given to us to transform all our activities into the selfless ones if we perform the actions 
with devotion and dedication they help us to move forward they help us to purify the mind and we feel more and more joy and peace as we keep practicing selfless service following all the virtues in life selfless service is not possible with crookedness with jealousy hatred with ragadvesh but people have the common way of telling public service public service department but if you go and see how they do perform actions full of corruption the partisan favoritism all sorts of things greed so but they call it a service that's not the service what shri krishna is meant service established in character that is swami vivekananda puts very nicely work for work sake what a wonderful idea you don't have to seek any personal benefits they do come people may forget what whatever we have done but this one who never forgets anything that we do and that is the parmatma the divine lord knows every bit of action we do and he gives reward accordingly every action must have result and will be given result that means you don't have to worry unnecessarily divert your attention on the uh, result aspect of it focus concentrate on how well how best you can render service then you will see the result in course of your life first of all it purifies the mind purification of the mind itself takes long time long long time over number of previous births we have brought the mind loaded with so many samskaras so all the samskaras are to be organized properly then only we enjoy the love of doing selfless service we love to do it so a person who is having this attitude of serving the moment the idea of service comes it means your ego is little pressed downwards he firmly believes that he is a mere instrument of the divine such self as service will not bind him there is neither agency nor egoism in him they give an example as a burnt string may retain its form but it is unfit for tying even so the doings of the yogi man of wisdom a spiritual seeker do not bind him they are all burnt away in the fire of the knowledge that god alone is the real author of all that takes place in the universe whether you believe it or not it is so Arjuna also was under the impression 
the terrible war is going to be started and you will have to kill all these people and so on and so forth. Lord Krishna makes him understand who is doing all these activities. He shows him through the cosmic form that everything is done by God. Forget that you are doing. That was a terrible lesson for Arjuna to learn and for all of us to learn. Try to subdue the ego. Ego is a rascal, responsible for anything that happens to us. Most dangerous thing, ego. There was one, because I had given this example long time back when I was giving a talk in South Head Park class. That example is so nice, I want to repeat that example again now here, even though some of you might have heard it, but still it is nice to remember again. There was a program in a place, in a temple, very good program was arranged. I also had attended that program. I was sitting there as a participant. The temple was full of people. The chapel was full, maximum. And the person who was to give discourse was about to start. People are very deeply interested to hear his talks because he was so repeated person. And then some more people are coming inside to sit, to somehow find the place and sit in the chapel. You know people, they sit carelessly, they don't mind, they keep in their own way, they sit, even though another man can sit in a place nearby him, he put, puts his position in such a way, nobody else could sit, would be able to sit by his side. So one of the organizers came and told one particular person, Sir, will you please little, just move a little bit so that one person can sit there. That person became very angry. And he, to he told very nicely, not in a rude way, but he took it in a rude way. He became so upset he, uh, with, a, with a bang. He, rode, he walked and he got up and just get up, got away from the stage, from the chapel. All the persons sitting, more than two to three hundred people, they were all looking at him. Why this man is going away? What happened? And that man, he felt hurt. Why? Because he was a senior citizen. He was quite elderly. He has grown his hair grey. He demanded respect from the people. And this is the way they treat me. I don't care for the program. He just left. Who is a loser? He is a loser. Why he lost? Because he was ego. That's how it works. Egoism. All the conflicts and quarrels, things happen because of egoism. Terrible egoism. Immediately they got hurt feeling. And then when they become angry, they lose the sense. They want to do something before the anger goes away. That's how they do some most violent actions. Well, what can be said? Only we should pity them. So,
they're all burnt away in the fire of the knowledge that God alone is the real author of all that takes place in the universe. Such a person is called the wise by the sages because of his being endowed with this with this supreme knowledge. He is truly wise. He is very definite that everything is done by God. He is not simply talking. He believed 100%. Such a person is truly wise because he sees in action, in action. His body and mind are engaged in action, no doubt. Yet he feels he is doing nothing. Who is he? What power has he got? He clings to naught. He is firmly established in the attitude of witness. Witness. Sakshi. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, My cosmic mother is a real propeller of everything in the world. Beings are all puppets in their hands. The ignorant think that they are the doers. What a fine statement, Sri Ramakrishna is telling. If we have this attitude while performing actions, rendering service, then such actions are called inaction, inaction. That paves the way clear towards the abode of truth. Tektva karma phala sangam nitya trupto nirashrayaha karmanya vi pravartto pi naiva kinchit karoti saha Verse number 20 Chapter 4 Jnana Yoga Abandoning all attachments to the fruits of action ever contented, depending on nothing, though engaged in action, he does not do anything. Sri Krishna is explaining the characteristics of a person who is doing inaction, inaction. What inaction is, he is not to be gauged with things and affairs external. It is truly the state of the mind that indicates action and inaction. To give an example, the postman delivers letters containing happy as well as unhappy news which affect the addresses, but not the deliverer. The wise man similarly engages himself in actions which are all according to him, adorations of the Lord. He has no desire whatsoever, unattached that he is, he is ever content. There is no need for him to depend on anybody, great or small. The man with this frame of mind he is fixed in, in action, a karma. Spiritual discipline is indispensable for the attainment of self-knowledge. But the case of men of adamant faith is different. They get at this knowledge very easily. Sri Ramakrishna said, the gopis returning home once found no boatman to ferry them across the river Yamuna to Brindavan. 
the perplexed milkmaids presented their plight to the sage Vyas Maharshi, who had also arrived there just then with the same intent to cross the river. Vyas Maharshi, looking at them, said, Well, be not worried on this score. I shall lead you all to the other bank. Don't worry. But give me something first to appease the hunger. I am feeling hungry. Sage Vyas Maharshi. Immediately, they were all milkmaids, you know. Plenty of cream, butter, everything was there. So, they offered them to him. After taking full all the dishes given by them, Vyasmashi stood up and said, O Jamuna Devi, I pray to you, if it is a fact that I am fasting today, stop flowing and make a way for us to get to the other bank. Just though he has eaten and he is telling his fast. Do you know the result? The river did stop flowing. And the group safely walked to the opposite side. The gopis then pleaded with the sage to explain the anomaly in his statement that he fasted while actually he feasted on the delicacies which they had supplied him. Then Vyasamashi man of wisdom explained well the ceaseless hankering of my heart for Sri Krishna is my spiritual fasting the idea I eat is not allowed to enter the mind your dishes were all offered as oblation to the maker presiding over this body. Mahashi Vyasa's life in conformity with truth and his faith in the Almighty worked this miracle. He firmly knew that all the dishes given by the gopis for all offering done to the Divine Lord dwelling in his heart. That attitude was so well established, so everything came true. Nirashir yata chitta atma yakta sarva parigrahaha shariran kevalan karma kurvanna apnoti kilbisham. One who performs action for the maintenance of his livelihood, keeping his body mind and senses under control, relinquishing all possessions, does not suffer any evil consequences resulting from good and bad actions, for both lead to bondage. He just carries on the activities as a duty, that's all. Duty for duty's sake. No bargaining business. I did good actions, give me good result. I did bad actions, bad results. No. I neither want good nor bad. So if you are well established in that attitude, you are not, you are not bound. Of course, it's not easy to be established in that attitude, but that is the sadhana. Our daily activities are themselves are called sadhana because through these activities we have to rise up. 
the same activities which are binding people of ignorant can liberate the person who is wise edrachcha labha santushto dvandva tito vimatsarah samasiddhava siddhau cha kritva api cha nibadhyate he who is quite contented with whatever he gets without trying for it who is unaffected by the phase of opposites pleasure and pain who is free from malice or hatred and who remains the same in success and failure even when he acts such a person is not bound shri krishna is explaining Uh, action in action action in in action in action in action do you act is not bound contentment the person who is quite contented she now can say in the gospel God provides everything for a genuine devotee even without his making any effort the example is given the son of a real king gets his monthly allowance Sri Ramakrishna says further I am not talking of lawyers and men of that sort who go through suffering in order to earn money and who become slaves of others to that end i am speaking of a real prince a true devotee has no desire he doesn't care for money money comes to him of itself the gita describes such a devotee as content with what comes to him without effort a good brahmin without any personal motive can accept food even from the house of an untouchable it does not desire it it comes of its own accord there is a devotee sham sham basu he asked master if god alone does everything how is it that man is punished for his sins shri ramakrishna replied how like a goldsmith you task you like a goldsmith you talk how like a goldsmith you talk narendra said in other words shambhu has a calculating mind like a goldsmith who weighs things with his delicate balance shri ramakrishna says oh my foolish boy eat the mangoes and be happy for the use of your calculating how many hundreds of trees how many thousands of branches and how many millions of leaves there are in the orchard you have come to the orchard to eat mangoes eat them and be contented you have been born in this world as a human being to worship god therefore try to acquire love for his lotus feet why do you trouble yourself to know a hundred other things what will you gain by discussing philosophy look here one ounce of liquor is enough to intoxicate you what's the use of you trying to find out how many gallons of liquor there are in the tavern tavern doctor said quite so and what is more the wine in god's tavern is beyond all measure there is no limit to it shri ramakrishna said to sham why don't you give your power of attorney to god rest all your responsibilities on him if you entrust an honest man with your responsibilities will he misuse his power over you god alone knows whether or not he will punish you for
for your sins. Doctors said, God alone knows what is in his mind. How can a man guess it? God is beyond all our calculations. Sri Ramakrishna said to Sham, that's the one team of you Calcutta people. You all say, God is stained by the evil of inequality because he has made one person happy and another miserable. What these rascals see in themselves, they see in God too. He calls them rascals. Hem used to come to the temple garden at Dakshineshwar. Whenever he chanced to meet me, he would say, Well, priest, there is one thing worth having in this world, and that is honor. Isn't that so? Very few indeed say that the goal of human life is the realization of God. Sri Ramakrishna said, Pray to God in secret and with yearning that you may have that passionate attachment and devotion to Him. Shed tears for Him. A man sheds a jug full of tears because his family is sick or because he is losing money, or because he is worrying about getting a job. But tell me, whoever weeps sincerely for God? And Trilokya, another devotee asked, Sir, where is people's leisure? They must go to the jobs and uh, engage themselves in so many activities. They have to satisfy their English masters. Sri Ramakrishna said, well, then give God the power of attorney. If a man enters his affairs to a good person, will the latter do him any harm? With all the sincerity of your heart, resign yourself to God and drive all your worries out of your mind. Do whatever duties he has assigned to you. The kitten does not have a calculating mind. It only cries, mew, mew. It lies in the kitchen contentedly if the mother cat leaves it there and only calls the mother crying mew mew. It has the same feeling of contentment when the mother cat puts it on the soft bed of the master of the house. It only cries for its mother. So that's the way it is. Further Sri Ramakrishna says, There is no substance whatsoever in the worldly life. He is telling the devotees who had come there very frankly. The members of Ishan's family are good. So he has come. He has some peace here. Suppose his sons had been disobedient and addicted to drink and other vices, then there would have been no end to his troubles. One very seldom comes across such a religious family in which all the members are devoted to God. I have seen only two or three such families. Generally, one finds quarrels, misunderstanding, jealousy and friction. Besides, there are disease, grief and poverty in the world. Seeing this condition, I pray to the Divine Mother, O oh Mother, turn my mind at once from the world to God. Look at Narendra's troubles, referring to Vivekananda. His father is dead and the members of his family are starving. He has been trying his utmost to secure a position, but he has not yet found one. Just see how unsettled his mind is. Addressing Master Maheshwai, Sri Ramakrishna said, You used to come to Dakshineshwar very frequently, but why have you become such a rare visitor? Perhaps you have become particularly friendly with your wife. Is it true? Why should I blame you? The influence of lust and gold is everywhere. Therefore I pray, O Divine Mother, please, please, please don't make me a worldly man if I am to be born again in a human body. 
A Brahmin scholar asked, Why should you say that, sir? The scriptures extol the life of a householder. Sri Ramakrishna replied, Yes, that is true. But it is very difficult to lead the life of a true householder. It is very difficult to lead the true life of a householder. Then Sri Ramakrishna tells, There is a low caste woman named Bhagi in our part of the country. She had many disciples and devotees. Finding that she, a low caste woman, was being saluted by people, the landlord became jealous. So he engaged a wicked person to tempt her. That wicked fellow succeeded in corrupting her and all her spiritual practice came to nothing. Because she became corrupt. Two ladies, devotees of Sri Ramakrishna, entered the room and saluted the master. They had been fasting in preparation for this visit. They were sisters-in-law, the wives of two brothers, and were 22 or 23 years old. They were mothers of children. Both of them had their faces covered with veils. Sri Ramakrishna said to them, Worship Shiva. The worship is described in a book called the Nitya Karma. Learn the rituals from it. In order to perform the worship of God, you will be preoccupied for a long time with such religious duties as plucking flowers, making sandal paste, polishing utensils of worship and arranging offerings. As you perform these duties, your mind will naturally be directed to God. You will get rid of meanness. You will get rid of anger. You will get rid of jealousy and so forth. When you two sisters talk to each other, always talk about spiritual matters. The thing is somehow to unite the mind with God. You must not forget Him. Not even once. Your thought of Him should be like the flow of oil without any interruption. If you worship with love, even a brick or stone as God, then through His grace you can see Him. That is Sri Ramakrishna's assurance. Sri Ramakrishna himself worshipped Mother Kali in the image. Oh Mother, if you are alive in this image, please reveal yourself to me. And because of his concentrated meditation, maintaining purity level, Sri Ramakrishna did get vision of the Divine Mother. The whole truth was revealed. The whole universe was seen as nothing but Divine Mother. Then Sri Ramakrishna was overwhelmed with this vision and he entered into Samadhi. So he got that final experience. So when he said, if you worship God in the image, you can see him. It is not simply talking, it is through his own experience. What is most important is, we have to establish him very good character. We must maintain purity level. We try to cultivate all the virtues. So, Sri Ramakrishna is telling very emphatically, do all the activities which you have been doing, but do them as offering to the Lord. Then, Pray to God for love and devotion. 
result would be you will be endowed with God's grace. So what he is suggesting is along with our activities we must connect ourselves to the divine. We must pray to him to grant us devotion with all humility. If you are really praying, God surely responds. And that's the way we should conduct ourselves. Even though we are living in this world, carrying on all our activities, we should be able to transform them into spiritual activities. Thinking of God when you are doing any action keeps your mind pure and does not allow your mind to indulge in all sorts of uh, bad things because you are constantly repeating God's name along with the activities which you are performing. That's the way it should be done. Then all the actions become worship of God. Then karma becomes archana. Work becomes worship. Every bit of activity done by your senses becomes action of worship. Seeing, thinking, willing, doing, everything becomes acts of worship. That paves the way to become a real karma yogi. At the same time, you become the follower of jnana. The wisdom opens up. The intellect opens up. You have clear understanding and grasping of these subtle ideas and you really feel the whole universe is nothing but the manifestation of the divine. There the matter is final. No more doubts and surrender yourself to God. Feel that God is taking care of you in every way and carry on your activities honestly, sincerely, following all the moral values and principles, then surely you will be able to realize the truth. Let us stop here. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Upunaktu Sahavirya Karavavai Tejasvinavadhitamastomavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tat Sat May the Lord protect us, may he direct us, may he enlighten us. May we not be fruitful and enlightened. May we not hate each other. Peace, peace, peace be involved.